Welcome to Women in AI, um, the session with lovely Carla Taboata today. It's such a pleasure to introduce Carla to every one of you. Carla is a founder of um, Domitola Technology and data science leader and at Auckland Transport. Carla is talking about um, AI in education for school and over to you, Carla. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you today uh, to talk about one of the topics that I really care about, which is artificial intelligence education for school students. Uh, who is with you today? So this is me, Carla Tabada. Uh, I am uh, the founder of Domitila Technologies. I found Domitila with the, uh, with the mission to apply science and technology for social good, but focusing on women and children. But also I am a lead data scientist at Auckland Transport here in New Zealand, and I am in the field of AI, data science, machine learning uh, for more than 15 years now. Talking a little bit more about myself, I'm originally from Bolivia. So as you can see in the map, a beautiful uh, country in the heart of South America. And you can see in the picture, uh, the iconic, the beautiful Titicaca Lake, which is the highest lake in the world, uh, which, which more than 3,600 meters over the sea level. And as you can imagine, it is the source of food, uh, life and resources for the communities that live around this lake. But unfortunately, last year we were experiencing uh, the impact of climate change, pollution, contamination, and it's really affecting uh, the communities that, that live in this area. But we have children, right? And I'm really happy to present Esmeralda and Erika, these beautiful girls that uh, built this fantastic uh, robotic arm. Uh, the teacher encouraged them to participate on a national competition for robotics. And even though they live in a rural area far from the city and they don't have access to sophisticated material of expensive kits, uh, they build this robotic arm uh, with the objective to clean uh, to, to clean the Titicaca Lake so it can be beautiful and clean again. So they participate in the competition. They won one of the best prizes. And then they have the dream to someday to build a robot, a real robot, human size, that can help their parents uh, who are farmers. Uh, so that's a beautiful story that I love to share with you and to um, just analyze uh, who are the main roles in this in this story. So first of all, we have Esmeralda and Erica, school students. That uh, they're but they are just an example of so many kids around the world that are completely creative, capable, positive. That they just need the opportunity uh, to build fantastic things to contribute. And uh, number two, we have the parents, and I imagine that we have parents in the audience, that at the end, wherever we are, uh, whatever is our nationality or language, we want our uh, kids to be happy and to have the opportunities to thrive. Number three, we have uh, school teachers that, uh, uh, you know, they make a difference in the society. They are kind of second parents for us. And especially in this pandemic crisis in places like my country are doing a fantastic job with very few resources. And number four, we have education, in this case, STEAM education, that bring the opportunity to develop innovative mindsets and make the kids not just consumers, but creators of technology. If we focus on STEAM education, uh, there is one specific technology that is going to change the world and it's really going to make a great impact on the life of our kids. And this is artificial intelligence, of course. Uh, I don't have to tell you in this conference the importance of um, artificial intelligence, right? But in terms of education, um, last year there was the awareness and many resources, online education platforms uh, for especially professionals or adults to learn and to learn more about AI. However, not so much for our kids. So today my conversation is mainly not just discuss why we should teach AI, but I was uh, reflecting on what would happen if we don't teach AI. And that's the conversation, the discussion that I will link to, uh, bring to the table today. So I will focus on one space and one, the, the, the first topic, which is AI is reshaping the economy and career landscape. So let's dig a little bit more. Uh, as I mentioned, I am data scientist uh, working for Auckland Transport, analyzing the data from our networks of buses, ferries and trains and so on. I work closely with data engineers, a data governance manager, with cloud computing architect because our models are in the cloud. I work closely with machine learning engineers and so on. And this is just an example of the careers that we didn't have 10 years ago. 
and also an example that new jobs are around artificial intelligence and data, as you can see in this example. Uh, so uh, this, uh, uh, for instance, the World Economic Forum said in 2013 that around 65% uh, of young people will, will be employed in jobs that do not exist yet. That was in 2017. Now in 2020, it is, and it's mass creation, more than 85% now, I think, yes, right? And as you can imagine, the global demand for AI will continue increasing. The growth of, of uh, AI could create millions of jobs in the next few years and COVID-19 is accelerating all of these changes. Uh, so if uh, uh, previous explanation was for the people that are really interested in technology and would love to follow a career in, in AI or computer science, right? However, AI is across all sectors. So whatever is the, the career, uh, the job that our kids, our high school students would like to um, follow up, uh, AI will be there in journalism, medical, law, security, entertainment, across this uh, AI is across all these area, areas and making a very important uh, changes. So what will happen if we don't teach AI, especially, especially uh, focusing on our uh, high school students that are going to decide what they want to be in the future, uh, what they would like to study, what their main passions. So uh, students will be blindsided, no aware of current opportunities or new careers. The digital gap will increase, uh, not just from country uh, to, to, from one country to another, but from the cities to the rural areas because mainly uh, more opportunities are in the cities and also the lack of education will be a significant barrier for AI talent development and also AI adoption so it's not just an impact on personal level but it's also as a country level that for the countries that are not preparing the, the new for workforce and they are not updating the skills of the people they will have a um, complicated uh, um, situation in the in the near future uh, that was the first topic. The second topic that I would like to bring to the table today is about AI and social media threats for our teenagers. Uh, as you can imagine, at the moment, our society is facing important, our society and governments are facing important public policy decisions surrounding AI technologies. We will have many uh, conversations, wonderful talks today about the ethical issues in AI. However, what does it mean specifically for teenagers, for young people? And as you Imagine, as you know, uh, our kids are the, the main users for social media platforms, which are which are based on um, um, recommendation systems, and therefore we have the problems of algorithm filters or echo chambers, right? That they can make just one side uh, uh, view of the world. So what will happen if we don't stress, if we don't bring, bring this opportunity to reflect, to understand, to learn about AI for younger, for younger people, for school students? So, of course, teenagers will be at a high risk to suffer from uh, social media threats, such as fake news. Uh, there is uh, one um, organization in Spain, uh, the name is Courage, that they are making some experiment analyzing uh, uh, if, for instance, uh, students believe 100% on what they read, and in one study they mentioned that 80% of the kids, if uh, say that is, if it's there, is is a very well known or known uh, sponsor for a for a new, they will believe that is true, right? But at the moment, that's not the truth. We have to be very careful about the source that we read uh, to investigate a little bit more. So the kids need to be, to be aware of it. So the the consequences will be that. They are uh, the threat in the fake news, polarization, stereotyping, ideal, uh, ideal body image, and also like addiction, uh, addiction. Because as I just mentioned, uh, social media platforms are based on uh, of um, uh, recommendation systems that which are based on the the likes uh, that, that the people are are giving. Right. So teenagers will not know how to better detect these threats if they are not aware of how these. Um, uh, 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 platforms work and of course they will not be aware of the data privacy issues and data rights they that's that what will happen if we don't stress we don't bring this opportunity for them to learn more about what is ai and how does it work and the number three is that ai lacks the lens of diversity um you already uh, will see uh, in this in this uh, fantastic summit that ai is a and balanced world, like 80, 20%, if we compare in terms of gender, in all of the areas we have this problem. And you will also see some specific statistics that 
definitely there is such a uh, imbalance uh, uh, world, but not just in terms of gender, but also in terms of ethnicity or age. It's, it's really um, a really concerning problems of lack of diversity. So what will happen if don't teach AI? We unfortunately we uh, we will have the biased AI systems that will perpetuate gender and racial biases. Gender gap will increase. We will lose the opportunity to bring more women into the design and the applications stages of AI, and we will have a high risk of replicating historical biases and power imbalances. So more than ever, achieving a diversity of approaches and points of view is not just desirable, but is critical for the uh, for social good and to use technology, AI technologies for social good. So that's the problems that the main topics that I wanted to discuss with you, how AI is really reshaping uh, the, the career landscapes, how important it is for our kids to be updated, to know, to be aware of these changes, uh, the threats of social media uh, platforms because they are their main users, and also the lack of diversity because we need a, a opportunity or technologies that serve all of us, not just one specific group, right? So I was thinking how will be a better future when we have education for everyone, every world, how we can uh, make that school students are solving problems using technology, in this case, AI technologies. How can we raise that awareness and support teachers to bring this AI education to the schools and how we can uh, foster a community of AI experts. So from these questions is what I, uh, why I founded Tomitila Technology. That's the main reason to bring this education globally to everyone, especially focusing on in school students, because at the moment there is not so much effort for them. And, and for the reasons that I mentioned is very important. Uh, in order to bring this education, we are developing an online education platform when we provide online courses, programs uh, for school students, for educators, providing teaching resources, and also for non-technical people. Because at, at this stage, I can see that there's mainly for technical, but not so much for non-technical people, that one more time they need this knowledge, this learning, this awareness. Uh, we're also building a community of uh, people that are interested to support the schools that in my case, I don't live in my home country, but I, of course, care about the kids, not just of Bolivia, but everywhere. And I'm happy to share knowledge, experience, information about what is happening in this technology world. So we want to be that bridge from schools to the technical people. So everyone is part of the conversation and can contribute to the uh, uh, good, uh, good discussion. And something I would love to share with you is that to bring that AI education, we are not just providing online courses, but we are partnering with a fantastic organization in Denmark uh, who are uh, building a global community to create and share 1,000 ways to empower kids. What they do, they uh, this is a fantastic team of education experts, psychologists, and Montessori teachers that are really want to bring the next uh, 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 an education where ki the kids can really be empowered and then they can contribute with the fantastic talent. And we can, uh, we are, uh, we will be delivering an AI quest in the following months and working with closely with the schools in Finland. So that's my presentation for today. Uh, I um, hope uh, I can bring this uh, wonderful topic to bring AI education for school students, and this is the right time to be teaching AI. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing this amazing story, Carla. As always, it's such a pleasure to um, hear your story, and I'm pretty sure, you know, you know, all the audience, you know, really enjoyed the talk, and I've shared your LinkedIn um, for further questions. So thank you so much for your generous um, the offering that, and over to you guys. Um, Thank you so much, Carla. Hope to have you again. And thank you. We are wrapping up here. See you again, okay. guys. Thanks, Carla. Bye.